Hello, Ben Mankiewicz with you. Thanks for joining us on TCM, where we're in the middle of a night of movies starring Jimmy Stewart. Up next, the sixth film Stewart made with director Anthony Mann, their fourth Western together. It's from Universal, 1954, the far country. Set during the gold rush of the 1890s, Stewart plays an ambitious cowboy who seizes an opportunity to get rich by driving his cattle from Wyoming to the Dawson Mountains of the Yukon. He's joined by his partner, that's Walter Brennan, as they venture northwest to sell their herd to hungry miners and prospectors in the Klondike boomtowns. Along the way, Stewart makes an enemy of a crooked judge and witnesses lawlessness among feuding settlers. But Stewart's character named Jeff Webster isn't interested in taking sides. Anthony Mann and Jimmy Stewart collaborated as director and actor on eight films, all of them made in the first half of the 1950s, including Bend of the River and Winchester 73. Five of their movies together were westerns. Before these movies with Mann, Stewart had developed his long-standing reputation for playing everyman characters, good guys who they might make mistakes, but their intentions, their motives were pure. Even before World War II finally came to the United States, Stewart left stardom behind in Hollywood and he enlisted in the Army Air Corps. Stewart, a trained pilot with considerable experience, was 32 years old when he was inducted into the service of March 1941, nine months before Pearl Harbor. Jimmy Stewart did not use his celebrity status to stay out of harm's way. He talked his way into the action, becoming an officer, making 20 bombing runs in the B-24 Liberator over enemy territory. Could have been killed on any mission, and he experienced men serving under his command killed in action. Given the considerable weight of all that, Stewart returned to Hollywood a changed man after the war. The country's tastes, they had changed too. Stewart's re-entry to Hollywood came in Frank Capra's 1946 film, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a really bleak film for a good part of it, a reflection of Stewart's new and developing screen persona. He eventually settled into playing darker, more complex characters, which are on display in most of the films he made with Mann, who preferred to shoot on location. Mann shot the far country around the Columbia ice fields and Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada. Here it is from 1954, also with Ruth Roman and Harry Morgan, billed here as Henry Morgan, the far country. Throughout the 1950s, Jimmy Stewart and Anthony Mann maintained an impressive partnership spanning eight movies, all of them made between 1950 and 1955. Far Country also reunited Stewart with another frequent on-screen partner, the horse Pie. Stewart once called Pie one of the best co-stars he ever had. Stewart had become a skilled horseman thanks to his time shooting westerns, and the actor rode Pie in roughly 20 westerns throughout his career. He became very fond of the horse, which was part quarter horse, part thoroughbred mix, that's according to Stewart in a BBC interview with Michael Parkinson when he discussed his love for pie. Stewart remembered how Mann and cinematographer William H. Daniels secured the shot in the far country where pie walks down a street alone. On set, Stewart took the horse to the side and had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with pie, explaining what needed to be done to get the shot. Once cameras started rolling, I completed the scene in one take. Stewart's closest friend, Henry Fonda, later immortalized Pie in an oil painting that he gave to Stewart. That painting hung in Stewart's living room from roughly 1970 until his death in 1997. Coming up, Jimmy Stewart returns in a family-friendly picture alongside Maureen O'Hara. Mr. Hobbs Takes a Vacation is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, Mr. Hobbs takes a vacation, then the spirit of St. Louis, and later, Malaya. Jimmy is him on TCM Tonight. <laughs>